Although Wakanda pretends to be a poor country, it's actually a technologically advanced utopia. What caused Wakanda's industrial revolution? Let's talk about the economics of Wakanda. Hi, I'm Craig and welcome to Market Power, where we look at the power of markets and economics to shape our world. In this video, we're going to look at the forces behind Wakanda's technological advancements. Now you might be saying to yourself, oh, is this just one of those videos where you deep dive into a fictional world, overanalyze it and ruin it for the rest of us? No, that's not the point of this. The reason why we're going to look at Wakanda is because the forces behind Wakanda's industrial revolution are actually tightly related to the forces behind the British industrial revolution the one that brought us into the modern era. There are a couple of theories for why the Industrial Revolution was British. And actually, these theories map really well into plausible explanations for why Wakanda had the Industrial Revolution. If I asked you what caused the Wakandan Industrial Revolution, and you said vibranium, then you would fall in the camp of scholars that believe England's Industrial Revolution came because it had cheap coal. The British Industrial Revolution was built on steam technology, and of course that steam technology needed coal. And it just so happens that England had a cheap, abundant source of coal. In fact, such scholars believe that the reason why the Industrial Revolution occurred in England was because England was uniquely situated with this supply of coal. That perspective of the Industrial Revolution actually fits what we think about Wakanda pretty well. The Wakanda Industrial Revolution is built on vibranium technology, and of course Wakanda is uniquely situated on the only source of vibranium in the entire world. But there are other scholars who say that access to coal is just not enough to push England into industrialization. A second theory relies on culture. Joel Mokir argues that the British had this unique culture of sharing ideas that pushed it towards an industrial revolution. How does this theory apply to Wakanda? This one's harder for us to get a grasp on because we don't get to see much of Wakandan culture. Some evidence towards this theory is that they have war dog spies infiltrating countries and clearly appropriating ideas that they can then apply in Wakanda. But perhaps even stronger evidence is that Shuri was able to participate in innovation at such a young age and push the economy forward. Unfortunately, Shuri discussing ideas with her peers probably doesn't make as good of blockbuster footage as T'Challa fighting bad guys. So we're gonna have to shelve this theory for a while and see if we get more footage in the future. Well, we don't have really enough evidence to talk about that culture theory, so let's go ahead and move on to a third theory. This one goes back to that first one about cheap coal, but then combines it with scarce labor. One popular champion in this group is Robert Allen, who believes that the reason why the Industrial Revolution was British was because of high English wages. The theory behind this is actually pretty easy to see. When wages are high and coal is cheap, you're gonna look for a way that you can substitute this coal to replace some of that labor. Why were wages so high in England? Well, British and economic policy was very successful at the time, and of course it was globally oriented. This successful economic policy started pushing up labor demand and competition for this scarce labor. Therefore, wages started increasing. How does this apply to Wakanda? We can actually get a little insight into this question using some data collected from the movies. Is labor scarce in Wakanda? Well, one of the things we can do is just try to estimate what the population is and then see how that compares to England around this time. Is Wakandan labor scarce? Well, one thing we can do is estimate the population of Wakanda and then compare it to the population of England at the time of the Industrial Revolution. How are we going to estimate the population of Wakanda? One approach is to use the Wakandan military. The Wakandan military is about the only time where we see a significant population of Wakanda assembled in one place and we can actually count them out. In fact, if we go to Avengers Infinity War, we see the army arrayed out in front of the children of Thanos. In this scene right here, we can count about 2,250 soldiers in the Wakandan army. The circumstances lead us to believe that this is the entire Wakandan army, and not just Wakanda proper, but the Jabari tribe as well. But when Corvus Glaive sneaks over to try and attack Shuri, we see that there are a few soldiers there left to protect her, which makes us believe that maybe not everyone is out there. To be generous, let's assume that we're seeing half of the Wakandan army, and the other half is scattered throughout the country to provide light protection. If we round up a little bit, that means in the Wakandan army, there are 5,000 warriors. Now that we know the number of people in the Wakandan army, we can estimate the number of people in Wakanda as long as we make assumptions about the fraction of the population enlisted. If we look at Sub-Saharan Africa generally, the average enlistment rate is 0.4%. That means for every 1,000 people in the country, four of them are enlisted in an army. Is this too high or too low for Wakanda? Well, to be generous, we're going to say it's too high, and we're going to compare it to a country like Sierra Leone, where 0.1% of the population is enlisted. At that 0.4% rate, 
that means that the population of Wakanda is 1,125,000. If we then go down to the 0.1% enlistment rate, that means that the population of Wakanda is 5 million. How does this compare to England around the time of the Industrial Revolution? Well, in 1750, on the eve of the Industrial Revolution, England's population was about 6 million. Just from the size of the population, it seems like Wakandan labor is scarce. But when we think more about Wakanda's economy, the scarcity becomes even more apparent. After all, Wakanda doesn't even participate in international trade, and international trade is a way of importing labor into your country. But this labor scarcity hypothesis championed by Allen is not just that labor is scarce, but then it directs technological change to things that will save on labor. And is that what we see in Wakanda? Remember when Everett Ross looks into that vibranium mine and sees all the technology involved. In fact, we never see a Wakandan involved in mining. Shuri explains that vibranium mining is very dangerous and they have invented technologies to reduce human input and save those lives. And again, this makes sense because Wakandan labor is so scarce, you need to make these labor substituting technologies. So I hope you walk away from this video with both an idea of how the Wakandan Industrial Revolution occurred and the British Industrial Revolution. If you're interested in more videos that combine popular culture with economic theory and economic history, go ahead and subscribe. I'm Craig and thanks for watching Market Power.